Welcome to exercise number 10. Today we talk about function approximation and control. But before we start um, with today's exercise, I will do a short recap about last week. There we talked about function approximation and prediction. And we like today, so that's the reason I will start here. We use the same environment of the, um, yeah, of Jim, the mountain car environment. So we have here the underpowered car, underpowered car like last week, and need some kind of swing up to reach here the finish line and terminate the um, the environment. And with that, so what we did last week here in this exercise was that we had already our policy and we did uh, state um, yeah, an approximation of the state value with um, yeah, some linear functions and also neural networks. And today we will change that, that we not only approximate the state value, instead we approximate the state action value so that we can also uh, find based on the state action value a policy to control the mountain car and reach yeah, in an optimal fashion the finish line as fast as possible. Okay, with that we will have a look now into the exercise number 10 and we will start here with the semi-gradient SASA control based, off, uh, based on artificial neural networks. For that I have here on the slide the pseudo code. So what we have to do here is um, that we only use the state space as a, as a feature, so with a normalization that the range is from minus one to one and the yeah, finite action set of accelerate left, accelerate right, and um, doing nothing. And with these, we want to train some, or want to find an optimal control policy. But as Daniel and Max already yeah, pointed out during the lecture, it can be yeah, sometimes a bit yeah, hard to deal with that. And um, with that, we will start with the code. So we have here um, yeah, an import for a surface plot. Here we see the featureization. Um, maybe a short going through the um, structure of the neural network. We have yeah, the same structure like last week. We have an input layer based on the state dimension, um, a hidden layer and an output layer also based on the output dimension. So when we going forward through the network, we will use two times the ReLU activation function and in the output layer, the linear activation function. And what is maybe the important part here is that um, we, the output dimension will be here equal to the action value or number of actions. So um, like already shown in the lecture, we will use here the architecture in the middle that we uh, fed in the state and then we receive the state action value for the different actions of the environment. And yeah, with that, let's have maybe a, look, a deeper look into the pseudo code, what will be happening. So we have our differentiable function and policy based on the neural network. And then we need a step size alpha. It's already given here in the hyperparameter section. The epsilon is already there for the exploration. Um, the number of episodes is set to 300. And maybe an important part for the um, yeah, 
number of steps we will do. Uh, like last week, we um, have here the different for loops equal to the pseudo code. But important is here um, that we, yeah, running this while loop until the truncated or terminated flag is true. And the truncated flag um, has a timeout after 200 steps. So the um, while loop will exit after 200 steps when the trunk uh, with the timeout out or if we reach the finish line with the terminated flag. Okay, then maybe we can have a look into the interact function. So we will um, yeah, get the action value and action based on the policy. And the policy is um, in the top. Here we see also that the done flag is set based on the terminated or truncated flag, which I already set. And in the policy, we yeah, see that we based on the um, yeah, epsilon greedy part, we look for the maximal action value or we randomly choose one of the actions. And then we can also have a short look into the learning part. And there we see also these if um, part, the if else condition um, where we um, yeah, have to perform different learning steps to update our weights. Okay. Then when we run the thing, um, we will see here different surface plots. So this is the current map of the state action value. And what we see here after, yeah, in episode zero is that we have the random initialization only values near the, near, um, in the near of zero. And when we continue the learning after 100 episodes, we will have the first yeah, area here in the, uh, in the 3D space. And what you can see here in the middle in red under the surface is the already visited space, uh, states. And what we also see here is like on the last week that, yeah, based on the randomization, the already seen states, we have here again the issue that the um, state action value is yeah, not in the expected area, that we get here a better value um, in the uh, area where we get a higher distance to the finish line. And when we continue the training, then we see here that it changed a bit, but really the part near the finish line with positive velocity is uh, rated better. But yeah, based on the already visited states and so on, it changed between the trainings. And what we can see also here is that we are, no, uh, we are not able to visit, uh, to, find, uh, to see the finish line during the full training process of 300 episodes. But um, at least sometimes during the preparation I had uh, some agents or some exploration where we are, were able to hit the finish line during this process. So when we now have a short look on the result, we will also see on the mountain car that it is not able to reach the finish line. It's, um, yeah, Stacy in the middle tries to accelerate here to the left side to get higher speeds. And we see that we all uh, terminate here after 200 steps. We can have a second look and yeah, it looks like that the current agent tries to go to the left to accelerate, but don't really um, learn how to reach the finish line in this case. That I would say was one of the results what was not so good, but sometimes it looked uh, it looked a bit better. But yeah, that's it somehow to these um, 
first part of the exercise. And to overcome this, we go now into uh, task number two. Okay, now in task number two, we want to overcome the issue that we can't find an optimal policy with the basic features. And for that, we want to use now some function approxy, uh, some feature engineering. And um, we use in this case the radial basis functions to yeah, get some further features. Um, for mo some more information, uh, you can also get um, can read the book of Barto and Sutton and um, yeah what was interesting for me is that they mentioned this is one of the yeah uh, feature engineering parts which are able to um, transform your con your uh, finite state space to a continuous uh, state space and then you have also yeah <clears throat> Differential, differentiable functions or states for uh, to solve reinforcement learning of uh, tasks. Okay, so we um, continue with the same algorithm from task number one, but as I mentioned, we now have these radial basis functions, and here we see that these functions have. Uh, or the functions we will use here has have four different centers and each of these centers um, has 100 n components that means that we have here um, 100 monte carlo samples of the uh, radial basis function and this ends also in the state vector in 100 features so based on this um, part we have now then 400 features in our state vector or as an input for the neural network. Okay, then then it is everything the same like we saw it before we have only one difference in the execution of this code um, and that is that we now not perform only one training we will do instead five trainings that we um, yeah filter a bit the random the randomness out of the yeah, initialization or also the um, state and action values we see during the training um, as i mentioned before in the first task this can lead also to different results that some yeah of the mountain cars work better or worse or also the um, resulting state action yeah approximation will look a bit different from training to training and that will be also shown in this case so it uh, it is really the same algorithm like we had before, only the input dimension is now another because of the um, radial basis functions. Okay. Um, and uh, what it's also worth to mention is that the, um, the training is also uh, the training time is also increasing because of the um, yeah higher input uh, number of the network in this task than before so that yeah the training of five agents take here already 40 minutes for me on my laptop and when we go up to the first task it only took two minutes and 40 seconds to solve uh, the or to run the training routine. Okay, as before in the first task, we start to look at the surface plot uh, for the epi uh, first or episode zero, and then um, we have yeah different results for each hundred trainings. And what we can see here is that uh, based on the initialization, the state action value or uh, state action approximation is 
near the zero values in average and during the training we see now that yeah we get some quite different shape to the first one we don't have a yeah a plane it's more like yeah um, a hill in the middle and um, that is also um, the yeah, picture we would expect when we remind to the or uh, to the slides during the lecture there was also shown a solution for these mountain car and what we can see here is that um, yeah already after 100 episodes it's um, look much more to the expected results than the first task and that is also increasing after um, 200 episodes and what we can see here already is that um, the episode length here is 200 so um, yeah we the agent is at this moment not able to finish and here in the episode 200 we are already um, able to finish the task within 140 steps and we see also here in the visited states that we see much more areas than before and here at the 0 0.5 position we see that the car is really able to hit the finish line um, yeah and these uh, three states is now repeated five times because of the um, yeah the five trainings and we always see that we get these expected um, state action map like we already saw in the lecture and then we have here some further plot so this is a so-called um, yeah, learning curve a bit and what we see here is now the average length of or average steps per episode and the mean value is here in blue and we see that yeah somehow after 50 episodes the mean value is going down from 200 so that we really terminate our episode and hit the finish line and this is decreasing with the number of episodes and in red is the standard deviations over the five different agents so uh, what we see here is also that the um, number of steps per episode is continually decreasing and that um, let us expect that when we would add some further episodes we could even lower that um, to yeah maybe 120 or even less steps per episode um, and then we have here some nice extra plot um, with the average steps it needs for the different policies here one time the greedy policy where we only take the optimal action and here the epsilon greedy policy where also some random action are within and what we see here is that yeah in the mean the greedy policy finishes the uh, finish at 150 steps uh, and the epsilon greedy at yeah a bit above 160 but um, what I have to mention here this is yeah one of the worst results I already had some where the greedy policy was around yeah between 130 and 140 I guess uh, when you execute the code or your result could uh, look yeah much better than this this is really not so optimal in the solution um, yeah then let's have a look on the execution of the car the last time I executed I only took uh, 95 steps to the finish line this is much better than here in the plot are sh uh, shown and when I executed here this again then we see a nice swing up of the car now it needed one more uh, swing to get to the finish line so we, it needed 140 steps roughly and maybe we can see it now in the second try that it's finished a bit better no same behavior 
let's try it one more time. It's always a bit different because of the start value. Yeah, this looks again not too good. I hope we can get one time where it's really a bit better. Yeah, finally we got it in the first swing with under 100 steps to the finish line and the environment terminated. Okay, so with the feature engineering, we were now able to finish the mountain car with less than 100 steps. And now we want to use these feature engineering with the with some linear approximation with online least squares policy iteration. So we are going yeah, from the methods a bit, yeah, uh, take a step back. So like last week we started with the linear approximation and go then to the nonlinear approximation with neural networks. And now we started with the neural networks and yeah, and with some linear approximation. So on the slide here, you see the pseudocode for that. And yeah, let's go through the pseudocode and um, look what we find in the solution. So we will use the same feature representation like in the second task. So we will have the, yeah, um, same features uh, with the radial basis fun functions. So we will see that here in the feature riser part, um, same amount of features and also same um, yeah, uh, center. Okay. And so what we see here is that we also need the same behavior like last week that we set our features towards zero when the environment is terminating. So same like last week, we have this wind flag and with the wind flag, we um, set here the feature vector to zero if we are terminating or hit the finish line in that case. Okay. Um, Maybe also some important part is that now the yeah, weights, when we update them, um, we have in these um, yeah, linear approximation then for each action, the feature vector so that the dimension of the weights is not only the normal feature vector, it's instead the feature vector size multiplied with the number of actions so that we get then in this case, yeah, roughly 1,200 weights which are optimized during our um, yeah, learning steps. So policy yeah, is somehow same like before. We um, use the max Q value uh, for the greedy action and has used some random action for the policy, uh, for the um, exploration. Um, yeah, and here the learning part is yeah, comparable somehow to the recursively squares a bit. And um, important maybe to mention is that we use here again a lambda of one that means that the we um, yeah, respect all experience we get during the training um, when we want to ask uh, answer the question here if we use a lambda less than one then uh, yeah we will somehow forget some part so um, higher values respect 
uh, yeah, also the past experience uh, more. And when we have really low values, only the newest experience will uh, yeah, consider it during the weight update. Okay. That is somehow the part I want to tell you to this task. Um, again, we will um, run five different uh, learning procedures. So that is the first for loop. The second for loop is the number of episodes. And the third while loop is then the iterations uh, or interaction through the episodes with the environment. And um, as I said before, um, after 200 steps, we will end this or terminate this with a timeout. And um, the other argument or the other part to terminate this loop is that we hit the finish line earlier than these 200 steps. Um, further important part is that the yeah, learning time in this case really explodes a bit. Um, we already needed, I guess it was half an hour to solve the second task to learn all five agents. And now with these yeah, least squares policy iteration, I needed uh, for the execution on my laptop over two hours to um, train all five agents. So what we see here now is similar to the previous task. We have here the initialization of the state value function or approximation. And with the time, we will yeah, receive the expected shape I already showed it before um, based on the lecture slide that we yeah, somehow find the approximation of the state action value, which looks near to our expectation. And this is shown here five times again for the different yeah, learning periods. And um, yeah, when we then come to the end, we have here again our learning curve. What we can see here is that we uh, um, have quite early uh, yeah, better or comparable result to the neural network. Here we had 100 episodes and then we go back to the um, feature engineering with the neural network, then we needed 300 episodes to yeah, nearly reach the 150 in the mean to finish. And now with the linear approximation, uh, a linear function approximator, it is only around yeah, 100 episodes and we have sometimes even better results. Um, yeah, When we now train for more episodes the um, neural network, then it's the expectation from our side that we also can reach the performance similar to these um, linear function approximators. So maybe a short look also on the execution, what is not really um, yeah, in our expectation in this case. It's yeah, sometimes lucky, I would say, that the greedy policy um, has the same mean result and even a better um, yeah, standard deviation in the performance than the uh, greedy execution. Sometimes that happens, it me, um, but it's not uh, that what usually is expected here. So then maybe in the end, we can also execute here the mountain car environment to have a short look on that. And what we see is that, yeah, Murphy's Law, we needed again here some more steps than expected, 112. Um, the form execution was around 80, I guess. So we can do it again. And what it should be only need one swing, directly swing up to the finish line. And yes, we are around yeah, 87 steps to solve this. And yeah. 
that's it for this exercise, I would say. With that, have a nice week and you see me then again at ex exercise number 12.